final item of business today is the Members' Business Debate on Motion Number 12526 in the name of John Scott on Prestwick Airport Spaceport bid. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put, and I would be grateful if those members who wish to participate in the debate could press the request to speak buttons now. I call on John Scott to open the debate seven minutes or so. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And may I begin by thanking colleagues from all parties for their support for my motion and for taking part in this debate today. Presiding Officer, Prestwick has since 1913 been at the forefront of pioneering flight when Moncton Meadows was first used for manned flight. In 1935, Hamilton and McIntyre created Scottish Aviation at Prestwick, which is still the blueprint for the airport and the aerospace hub that surrounds Prestwick today. The 1950s and 1960s saw Prestwick pioneer transatlantic flight from the UK, and now today another Scottish and UK pioneering opportunity again exists at Prestwick Airport, just over 100 years after the first flight from Moncton Meadows. So what is the opportunity that a UK spaceport represents? No longer is space the final frontier, to borrow a phrase, but in our modern world, it is the next frontier. And the development of the space industry is one we must urgently grasp, and with both hands. Currently, the, space, the UK space sector has a turnover of £11.3 billion and employs 34,000 people. Mr the Scott, could I stop you for a moment? Could we have the back door closed? Please, I'm afraid there's noise drifting into the chamber. Many thanks. John Scott. Thank you. Currently, the UK space sector has a turnover of £11.3 billion and employs 34,000 people. The target is to grow our UK space industry to a £40 billion turnover in the next 15 years and create 100,000 jobs in the process. And the major barrier to this growth is the lack of a UK spaceport. So while America and Russia lead the way in this industry, we in the United Kingdom must create our own space and do so soon to capture our share of the growing satellite launch and deployment market and position ourselves for space travel and space tourism in due course. So if we accept that we must develop a spaceport, the next question is where is it to best suited to do so? And I would suggest the location of choice in Scotland and indeed the United Kingdom is Prestwick Airport. Firstly, Prestwick Airport is already home to a diversified manufacturing aerospace industry and a maintenance and repair and overhaul hub. Over 3,000 jobs currently exist in our world-class aerospace hub and its supply chain at Prestwick. Creating, building and maintaining pioneering and existing aircraft is part of our DNA at Prestwick and throughout Ayrshire. And the twin pioneer and the Jetstream 31 and 41 aircraft are perhaps the most iconic examples of this. Our local community has always welcomed innovation at our airport and in our aerospace industry, and takes a particular pride in Prestwick's history and a keen and supportive interest in its future. Over 800 acres of land is available to and used by this already diversified airport, with significant land available for future growth. First-class road and rail links now exist, with motorway connections from Glasgow and central Scotland now available to the front door of Prestwick Airport, as well as there now being direct rail links to the airport from Glasgow and Edinburgh. Prestwick already handles civil passengers, freight, UK and NATO military aircraft, as well as search and rescue from Gannett. In addition, NATS has one of its two UK centres less than a kilometre from the airport, employing over 700 dedicated professionals in the air traffic control industry. Prestwick is also ideally placed within the United Kingdom for high inclination polar launches with clear and uncluttered airspace all the way to the North Pole. Of course. John Finney. Thank you. I'm very grateful for the member accepting an intervention. Would the member accept that, uh, in that regard, the last comment there about the, the airspace, Prestwick isn't unique, and indeed Macrahanish would fit that criteria as well? John Scott. Yes, yes, of course, I would accept that point. However, I also want to turn to other aspects that make Prestwick uh, the location of choice. And one of those is the weather conditions at Prestwick. And these, again, 
make Prestwick the location of choice in Scotland, and indeed the United Kingdom, located as it is in the rain shadow of Arran. It will have crept into the consciousness of colleagues the launch delays at Cape Canaveral because of cloud cover over the last 40 years. Yet Presswick Airport was located in its current position because of its lack of cloud cover, a fact that saved the lives of many American and British flyers during World War II. This fortunate yet deliberately selected for geographical location is now also important to commercial space operations with Prestwick having the least prevalence of cloud cover compared to competitor English and Welsh airports, according to available Met Office statistics. Prestwick's concrete runway is also of sufficient length to accommodate space flights, unlike Newquay and Lanbear, both of which would require extensions to bring them up to a minimum standard. So, in the time available, these are some of the key reasons why Prestwick is not just the location of choice in Scotland, but in the UK as a whole. What is needed now is for the Scottish Government to come to an early decision on which airport will be the preferred Scottish option and then throw its weight behind that choice. Make no mistake, the bids for UK in Cornwall and Landburn in Wales to be the locations for spaceport are already being lobbied for extensively within the corridors of power at Westminster and indeed America, while our own bid team at Presswick is only modestly resourced by South Ayrshire Council and Presswick Airport itself. Presswick could be described as a late entrant to this very competitive field, but with support, its obvious attributes should make it a clear winner in the Scottish and UK bidding process. The strength and depth of the Presswick bid team should also be noted, with widespread support coming from the aerospace sector, which is keen to develop and build on its internationally recognised skill set. Support has also been forthcoming from South Ayrshire Council, University of the West of Scotland, Strathclyde University, the Ayrshire College and the Ayrshire Chamber of Commerce. But perhaps most importantly of all is the support of the local people of Prestwick, Ayr and Troon for this pioneering project. Minister, the choice is yours and I urge you and the Scottish Government to select Prestwick Airport as Scotland's choice for spaceport and then support Prestwick Airport as the location of choice for spaceport in the United Kingdom. Thank you. Many thanks. We now turn to the open debate. Speeches of around four minutes or so, please. Adam Ingram to be followed by Margaret McDougall. Thank you very much, uh, Presiding of Officer. Firstly, can I congratulate John Scott on securing this evening's debate on a subject both of us are happy to work together to promote. For the Chamber's benefit, whilst the airport falls within John's constituency, the aerospace park lies within mine. Um, so, but in any case, the whole of Ayrshire is united in its desire to see the aerospace industry and the airport thrive and prosper after some difficult trading years uh, post the 2008 crash. Forecasts for the sector as a whole over the next 15 years are extremely good, with the civil aerospace market set to double in size. Currently, the UK aerospace sector accounts for 17% of global market share, second only to the USA. Presswick is the largest cluster in Scotland, accounting for over 50% of the Scottish aerospace workforce contributing some £400 million to the local economy and supporting 3,200 jobs. The question is how to secure the future of Presswick and take advantage of this growth. For me, winning the bid to become the UK's first operational spaceport will go a long way to achieving that objective. The UK Government are seeking to establish such a facility by 2018. It will become a launch station for next generation satellites and space instruments using the modern generation of horizontal takeoff space launch vehicles and in due course an operating base for manned flights using reusable spacecraft. Presswick just has to be the preferred bidder from a Scottish perspective. There is an experienced high-tech aerospace workforce 
in substantial aviation and engineering companies on site. The Scottish Government has awarded the Aerospace Park Enterprise Area status. Our universities in the west of Scotland are at the forefront of space and engineering research and technology. And couple that with the established physical infrastructure, including a three kilometre runway, safe over water flight paths, clear airspace, an enviable weather record, and well developed transport connections to the rest of Scotland, and the case becomes incontrovertible. Surely it's a no-brainer that Presswick maximises the value that can come to Scotland from space sector growth. That doesn't mean that other potential Scottish locations should be left out in the cold. Presswick could operate Macrahanish as a diversionary location and for special test operations. Highlands and Islands locations should be developed for ground station networks. A bid which incorporates these features would have every chance of success. Scotland would clearly be best placed for UK satellite launch and polar orbit deployments and ground stations for satellite data capture. I would urge the Minister to throw the Scottish Government's weight behind such a bid. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Many thanks. I now call Margaret McDougall to be followed by Chick Brodie. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and can I also congratulate John Scott on securing this debate on Prestbrook Airport Spaceport bid. I must also apologise to the Chamber in advance, as I will have to leave before the end of the debate, because I have another engagement. On February the 26th, Prestwick Airport was accepted as one of the preferred bidders for the UK Spaceport. The other airports that made the shortlist were Campbelltown and Stornoway, Newquay in Cornwall and Landwehr in Wales. Since then, I'm pleased to say that the Presswick team have been very busy in their endeavours to secure the bid for the only UK spaceport. Presswick is delighted to have commissioned RS and H, the premier US designer in the spaceport industry, to prepare a logically and technically strong bid that meets with US licensing framework, and they feel these consultants will be of great advantage and assistance to them. The Presswick team were the only UK contenders to attend the US Space Foundation event recently, and this was hugely beneficial, informative and useful in making contacts within the spaceport industry and helpful in their preparation of the bid. Presswick Airport is critical to the North Ayrshire economy, and not just North Ayrshire, of course, East and South as well. And if it was chosen to be the UK spaceport, it would be a huge game changer, not only for Ayrshire, but for all of Scotland. If accepted, Prestwick would be used as the takeoff point for space tourism under proposals from Sir Richard Branson's Virgin Galactic and XCOR space expeditions. However, turning Prestwick into the UK's first spaceport wouldn't just mean space tourism for the super rich. It would allow Ayrshire to capitalise on and play a key role in satellite launching and manufacturing, as well as in the space science sector, which is currently earning around £11.3 billion in revenues, a figure which grew by 7.2% between 2011 and 2013, despite the recession. At this stage, UK has no satellite launch facilities of its own, so this would be the first of its kind opening up Prestwick to an untapped wealth of future potential. It would have a huge impact on the Scottish economy through promotion of skilled jobs, training facilities, opportunities for high-tech suppliers and services, and the boost for tourism. Prestwick Airport is, hands down, the best site in the UK. It is well connected by both road and rail. Furthermore, if the Glasgow Crossrail was pursued, the airport would be connected by rail to the whole of Scotland, which no other Scottish airport would have. It also has excellent weather reliability, as we have heard already, and is the main diversion site if other airports have to be closed due to bad weather. Finally, the site offers an attractive long main runway, runway and a varied and established business environment and an engineering sector through the International Aerospace Park 
and enterprise zone, which would be easy to expand and build upon if the spaceport bid was accepted. To conclude, presiding officer, now that Prestwick is down to the final five, it appears to be in a strong position to become the site of the UK spaceport. Prestwick not only meets the criteria, but surpasses it. It has the skills, the space, the transport links, and bizarrely for Ayrshire, the good weather. I think the best way forward is for there to be one bid from Scotland, so they are not competing against each other. And I hope the airports can come to an agreement whereby a joint Scottish bid, which would be mutually beneficial to all involved, and could present a combined offer with a range of strengths and benefits. I'm eager to see this approach as a solution and hope this can be developed into a winning bid. I will be, campa <laughs> I will be campaigning vigorously from now until the announcement later this year to ensure that the first spaceport due by 2018 is a Scottish one, based at Prestwick, because it has all the attributes required and I hope the Scottish Government will back the bid. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I now call Chick Brodie to be followed by Michael Russell. Yeah, thank you, Presiding Officer. I'm uh, delighted that John Scott uh, has brought forward this uh, debate today. Uh, for me, on this issue, uh, I've had a love affair with Presswick since I was a European business manager with Digital and Air, where from we flew regularly uh, to sister companies, in fact, very regularly, by Bandarante to Shannon and by Lear to uh, uh, Geneva. Its decline, therefore, was a surprise when I returned to 25 years later to Scotland and to Ayrshire. But any suggestion that it might close was anathema to me and I know to uh, very <coughs> many others. Now, I don't diminish the notion and the passion that accompanies the desire of other Scottish airports to become uh, the UK's permanent spaceport. Uh, but the Department of Transport consultation and the resultant questions on supporting commercial space plane operations in the UK leads, and leaving parochialism aside, leads to only one outcome. And it was on that basis, uh, as I said in a press release at the time of the DFT announcement, that Presswick, uh, being one of the, uh, uh, the sites uh, in the shortlist, would benefit from ultimate selection but so would the UK Space Agency in general. Presswick would, I believe, secure at least the expected 10% of the global space economy, bringing a boost not just to Ayrshire and Scotland, but in terms of industry and economic growth and research and development, but to the wider UK. The space economy already contributes, as, as John said, as Mr Scott said, £11.3 billion to the UK economy, supporting nearly at 35,000 jobs, and by 2018, we can see immense growth in deployment of, for example, variable size uh, satellites via new launcher technology, and of course, transglobal suborbital flights. And, presiding officer, it would not be the first time that Presswick has been the base associated with the, the saying that man has gone where no man has gone before. Uh, founded by the Marquess of Clydesdale and D.F. McIntyre, were the first. Uh, to fly over Everest, for example, in 1933. So we can, and we will wax lyrical about Presswick. Two major concrete soft runways of 3,000 metre and 2,000 metre in length, a weather record, a microclimate second to none, where the fawn effect creates that warm microclimate with little rain and largely fog-free, not something available elsewhere in Scotland. Extensive maintenance, repair, uh, operation capabilities, an aerospace campus at the University of the West of Scotland and in the colleges, aerospace skills and passion and where Scotland has the largest community of space industry employees outside London and space programmes at Glasgow, Strathclyde and Dundee universities. All of these and more, uh, such as the National Air Traffic Control Centre at Presswick. But above all, it is a resilience airport with high skills and military experience and is the UK's primary strategic a diversion airfield. Presiding officer, I referred previously to the Department of Transport consultation regarding the feasibility of locations with regard to the spaceport. Let me just draw on two of the 11 questions. To question two, which asked if the location should still be active, but at a low level of aircraft and AA movements, but should have an existing and appropriate ground infrastructure facilities and service provision, should have a view 
uh, a view that was expressed that the combination of several suborbital operations a day with moderate aircraft traffic, commercial or freight traffic, military traffic and general aviation could in fact be well coordinated. And question 8 received a government response that the safety of the uninvolved general public is paramount and that the CAA's strong recommendation for a coastal location for space plane operations mm -hmm. is valid. Just two questions where Presswick fulfils these criteria, for those and many other reasons, without in any way uh, denigrating other propositions. I believe and support the view that Presswick and those that are driving this, Stuart McIntyre and his team, are doing a great job. Prestwick is it. For me, Presiding Officer, the love affair continues, as does the belief uh, uh, and the dream that Prestwick's positive future is not just in the stars, but in getting there. Thank you very much. And finally, before I call the Minister, Michael Russell. Hey, thank you, Presiding Officer. And um, I congratulate uh, John Scott on securing this debate. And I do agree that Scotland should be the location of choice for the spaceport. Uh, and I'm not here to rain on Prestwick's parade, or, or not completely. I supported the purchase of Prestwick by the Scottish Government when I was a member of the Cabinet. And indeed, when I was growing up in Ayrshire in the 1960s in Troon, I used to go plane spotting at Prestwick Airport. And I remember seeing the uh, Danair Dakotas to the Isle of Man, a regular service that was operating where the, you watched the passengers troop on and then you realised that one of them must be the stewardess because she changed her hat just before she got into the plane. But I do want to say that this debate would not be complete without seriously considering the merits of Macrahanish. And indeed, I want to say why I believe that Macrahanish and Campbellton are the places that should uh, be boldly going into this race and should be ready to uh, serve the final frontier. The criteria for this choice are very interesting indeed. There should be a minimum uh, length of the runway of 3,000 metres. Uh, Macrohanish, of course, has a runway just over 3,000 metres. Unfortunately, Prestwick does not. Indeed, the parallel taxiway at Macrohanish is almost the same length as Prestwick's uh, runway. Um, there should be, of course, a coastal area. It's interesting to note that Campbellton has coast on three sides, not just on one side. And that would be an important criteria. And in terms of population density, Kintyre's population density is 0.13 persons compared to the Scottish average of 0.65. Campbellton is also served by a deep water port, port with three piers, one of which is a NATO pier. And indeed, in those modern port facilities, there's also a Roro facility, uh, which is used to taking very large cargoes. And the point that has just been raised by Mr Brodie, that there should be a limited amount of aviation traffic, well, I have to say, regrettably, that the aviation traffic at Campbellton is even more limited than the present aviation traffic at Prestwick, consisting, as it does, of two aircraft services a day. But there is also a very substantial advantage that, uh, of course, I'm happy to give way to Mr McGregor. Jim McGregor. I thank the member for taking intervention. Would he also agree with me that Matt Crahanish is the only... UK uh, airport, which has twice been approved for space flight. How very prescient, Mr. McGregor. I was just coming to that point, which does feature in the Camelton Airport briefing. But it has been approved twice for space flight, uh, once by NASA and once by Virgin Galactic. So it does have an advantage over all the other contenders. Uh, it is also, and this is an important issue, I think, for the Scottish Government in terms of its enthusiasm for community ownership, it is a community-owned facility. It has a 1,000 acres of opportunity. It has 50 companies already operating on the site, but there is no shortage of space. And it has three jet fuel storage facilities and is capable of taking a very substantial fuel. And if the fuel for these space flights were to be hydrogen, then that could be produced from the renewable energy plants that exist on the Kintyre Peninsula. I think in every, in every instance and in every criteria, there is an argument to be made for Campbellton that is every bit as good as the argument for Presswick. And I don't want to uh, see this as one place against the other, though that is where we have come down to. And I do think that Mr Ingram's view that there might be a possibility of collaboration is a good one, and I would like to see that take place. But the people of Campbellton are asking for, and indeed demand, that there should be a level playing field when the Scottish location is considered. 
And in considering this matter, I have to say that it is fairly obvious that Campbellton has the longest and most level playing field of any of the Scottish contenders, and I do hope the government will continue to take it very seriously. Thank you. John Scott. Would, would Mr Russell agree with me that notwithstanding his, his reasonable comments about Michael Hanish, uh, the, the one particularly, indeed the two particularly distinguishing features that Prestwick has as its attributes are the 3,000 people in the maintenance and repair and overhaul hub around the airport, as well as the accessibility, the motorway and the, the rail accessibility, as well as the port accessibility, uh, which uh, could I say trump? Um, uh, uh, Michael Russell. I think there are good points to make, but I think in terms of accessibility, uh, Campbellton is accessible and could be even more accessible. Uh, and indeed, in terms of the jobs, I think the potential for creating new jobs in the spaceport is very great. This is not simply about sustaining jobs, and indeed we do not know how many of those jobs could be sustained. There are many different attributes required in, for the space industries that do not exist in the aviation industries, but the potential for creating new jobs on a community-owned site is very substantial indeed. And I do hope the Minister will look kindly upon what is friendly rivalry and might have the potential for cooperation but Campbellton does deserve, deserve to be considered. The time is coming for Cape Campbellton. Many thanks. And I now invite Derek Mackay to respond to the debate. Minister, seven minutes or so, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. A challenge has been laid out to me today to make a choice between the two remaining bids in Scotland, and I will resist because that taste of a debate between John Scott uh, and Michael Russell just shows that the strengths that the two remaining sites in Scotland have. Of course, it won't be the choice of the Scottish Government. This matter is reserved to the Westminster Government. And, of course, extra, extra terrestrial matters were reserved to the UK Government. And no matter how good an election result the SNP might get on the 7th of May, I'm still not sure this decision will transfer to the Scottish Government. So we will back uh, both bids and be supportive of both uh, locations. But between, of course, John Scott and Michael Russell was uh, the middle way um, of Adam Ingram and, and, and Chick Brodie um, uh, as well. And Margaret McDougall touched upon um, the strength uh, of, of the Presswick uh, bid. Uh, and, uh, of course, John Finney's intervention was to point out the strength of the Campbelltown Macrahanish uh, location uh, as well. So I'll resist backing one over the other. And part of the reason for that is I'm not sure it would add any extra value because the Scottish Government's clear that we want the spaceport to be located in Scotland and we'll do what we can to secure that, recognising the strengths and the opportunities of both uh, bids. But you know, it it's in a sense feels somewhat uh, futuristic, the debate we're having. But, of course, the reality, as John Scott and others have pointed out, is that economic benefits are real and in many ways are already here in terms of Scotland's contribution to this growing sector uh, and the industry itself. Latest figures show that Scotland is just under 5% of the total turnover in the UK space sector and 16% of the jobs within the sector. And there are ambitious targets for Scotland to seize 1% of the global space sector market by 2030. 1% doesn't sound like much, but in economic value, that's £4 billion per year to the Scottish uh, economy. So a prize absolutely worth pursuing. And the spaceport has the potential to generate a step change within the industry, stimulating further growth. That could be around manufacturing, uh, research uh, and uh, development, uh, and design and tourism, and a sense of location uh, wherever is selected and we have been supportive of the bids but we'll be even more supportive when the timescales are made clearer by the UK government and the final criteria is established another reason it not to prematurely rule out one bid over the other in case the final criteria is such that we may uh, eject a, 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 a substantial and, and uh, legitimate bid uh, from Scotland. So recognising the economic benefit that would bring the, the opportunity to the sense of location, I think that uh, both have strong bids. That said, Presswick Airport has made considerable progress. They have key local and national partners involved and Scottish Enterprise will continue to support uh, both. Uh, members have asked in the past about the other bids and it has been for other agencies to pursue those 
those bids and a matter for them to take forward. High Isles made its position clear and I think the MOD by its uh, silence or reluctance has, has stated its uh, position on their locations um, as well. In terms of the technical requirements, there will be clear technical requirements that will have to be fulfilled for any bid to be successful. But I think there's a very strong case around the added value that any bid, any location could bring in terms of the space industry as well. This will be significant for Scotland and in a UK context eh, and in a European context for the reasons that eh, John Scott eh, has raised. And I congratulate him once again for securing eh, this debate. So we'll focus on the launch of satellites, tourism, destination and all the other benefits that it will bring. Now, the Member's debate is about Presswick, and John Scott once again has covered the issues around the infrastructure that's at the location, the history, the potential that's presented. Even the weather's used uniquely as an asset, as a positive in a Scottish context. Scotland, the only country in the world where we can have four seasons in one day, but at the location in Presswick, it's a clear advantage for the reasons that have been given. So we'll back both bids uh, as they progress forward and as all becomes clearer through the UK government uh, we will support through individual support and hopefully through collaboration as a number of members uh, have raised that the choice for a spaceport uh, in the UK should be uh, in Scotland so that we can maximise the benefits of that and take advantage of the immense potential uh, that our people and our destinations uh, can offer. In that sense, we wholeheartedly support both bids and look forward to working enthusiastically with the partners to secure the spaceport for Scotland. Many thanks, Minister. That concludes John Scott's Members' debate on Presswick Airport spaceport bid. And I now close this meeting of Parliament. <laughs>